Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk. Which is a sequel to Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk. Both of which are games of kind of a horror tone, where a girl just wants to buy some milk and find happiness in life. So this opening is essentially summing up the events of the first game. It also looks a lot like Lane. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile, and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go get a bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air come from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen yet. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure of that. Let me just say the production values compared to the first game is like... This is this is a crazy jump. I, I've never seen that big of like... For like an indie game, I've never seen that big of a jump between like iterations like that. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 no. I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude. Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf, in a store, or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, 
nobody would drink milk inside the store. Which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. That's the mom. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. Woof! It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body, like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. After stiffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again. I stare questioningly into the monster's bombless eye sockets. Don't. Move. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I have promised so many times. Stay. Put. The moment it says that, its claws pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts! A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control of my body and slowly slide to the floor. Just like last time, but... Why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run from my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me! Kill me! Hysterical screams resound from the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere. Hitting the walls of a loud sound. I tried to imprint where every drop fell my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality of the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly, but surely slipped away, as if somebody fished them out of my head. One after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again even though I don't feel any need for it.
After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I always swallow them as a bunch of without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at. To twirl between my fingers, to chew on it. I do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, 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 no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I hate to brag about this to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Me? How you doing? Hey. Interesting room. I guess we are your conversation partner. Hey, long time no see. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. You know we're only supposed to be once per day, right? Can I? Save? Oh god, the save screen. I'm in the void. Can't tell if the screen is moving or if it's optical illusion. Oh no, we're going deeper. You know we're only supposed to be once per day? It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. There you go bullying me again. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit. I'm pretty exhausted after today, well I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, alright? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off, how about that? Hey. You can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great. Which means I can do anything and you... You can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy all of a sudden? Oh. Accidentally skipped that one. Basically it just said like, and you would be sad. Remember yourself a couple of hours ago. I don't know what you mean. Stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. I like that one. Nuh-uh. I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't me try ruining my mood. I just want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. 
So I have a feeling where the plot is going initially. Like, I'm actually under... Despite the dialogue and the way it's format, I'm actually understanding the story so far. But where it ends up, I don't know. Really can't be called. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in it. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, and we'll decide what to do with you. I do think this is lane inspired, though. The certain stylistic things, even the uh, the protagonist. Because I think the, they're the protagonist, you know, there could be twists and turns in the story. They even, like, kind of give me that Lane vibe just in their facial expressions, like right now. And Lane had similar dialogue kind of flow. I'm in front of my mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks like the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but it doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting my mind, two squared, two by two squared, squared, a squared, a square pyramid, a squared, a pyramidical structure, cubed, a pyramidical, a pyramid, pyramidal structure, hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. How do you feel? Sorry for being rude. How do you feel? It would be nice this route. You're mocking me, right? I'm obligated to ask you this at least a couple of times per session. A session, huh? You don't like that word? I'm fine. No, you're not. I don't know why, but I thought you'll take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know. Yeah, you ought to know how t challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? And what do you think? I can't be sure about anything, and you don't take me seriously anyway. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true. The pain subsided for a bit at that time. But now I feel the triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf of my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing with the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and a transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worse than my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. So what's up? What's down? I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Wherever it's rearing its claws from somewhere below waiting for me to lose focus. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. You sure? Because I'm here. What do you want, then? 
I... I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head. I lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off of my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming like cockroaches. Or super cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. Well, there they are. There's our thoughts. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. The fireflies now start swirling all around the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just... that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling makes me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! That's no way to talk to me. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you. Should it? Mm, yes. And what do you want me to do, then? I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all of my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They could be anywhere. Suddenly, so I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me, please? Tell me you will help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. That's a thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Well, you tell me. I... What? I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes, intensely. They are so itchy. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did you bring milk? No, did you drink milk? Did he bring milk? Dad? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear all my eyelashes one after another, all my eyelashes one after another, if I tear all my eyelashes one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass and then, then I need to have a bath and then. Here, drink some milk. I just got first death achievement. I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape. Gasping for air, I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. 
Well, that was truly something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 no. If I make even the smallest of mess here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't and I won't. Alright then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. Oh, I oh my. I have an idea. Last time becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. Ah, see, that's why the perspective has changed from the first game. Because the start of the game, the perspective is the same as the first game. And then, like, after the, the scene with the mom, it's changed to this. Some weird purposeful thing. You know, those games that have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. Do what you want. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, oh, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. What's that floating outside the balcony, by the way? Wowie. The smoke coming from your clothes. <laughs> Whatever. I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if we were in order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <laughs> it tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Are we in a point-and-click adventure game now? Uh, let's see. Computer. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item, I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful, tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are not are spot on. Okay, I imagined. 
All right, so your hamster lives underground. You have everything for comfortable for living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. Your hamster lives... Okay, got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. You'll end up returning to that subject anyway. Just like hamsters. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you too. That means you are all the same. Apart from the fact that you were born at that shop. You ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you nothing at all. I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh! Okay, let's start over. This time, try to avoid stupid hamster analogies. You know I'm not at fault here. So, I had a lot of friends online, tens, hundreds of them, impossible to count. Is it impossible, though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although, I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get distracted. Alright. From my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming just like me. 130 of them liked drawing just like me. The remaining 113 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. That's true. I also understood that all my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend. And I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyways, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose. It's mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, You'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. I sit on the floor and the laptop screen is right in front of me. The only thing reflecting it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey. Let me know if you need a break. One day, someone appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh? Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to try to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that, then starts glowing again as if coming back to its senses. For some time it thinks about the fervent course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. And what about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story, maybe. Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget... You remind me of a coded word, for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. And for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Sure is a lot of items around here. What about the fan? What's the fan do? <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan. And... I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is the cage it's locked in. And the cable. It's like an in inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Useless. What about these photos? 
And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're empty. Oh god, like my soul. I stirred them so intensely that I burned them into my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Is that an AC? I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Is there a firefly in there? Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We better look somewhere else. Oh, that makes sense. My hood cockroaches be there. Have you forgotten? You're the one who told me to think of my fonts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but... Cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I do. Umbrella? Lights? Backpack? What about this book? This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are empty, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely, why? Isn't it obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that could turn into? Maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one. By what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do the one instead of another. Then how would I decide which action to take? Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wire so sleeping bag the cracks the laminate and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page. The way it should be. Too bad, I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room. It makes the pages rustle. Oh no, I shut my eyes. A distinct sound of pages turning echoes with a he with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer. If I wait. Open your eyes. No! It's okay. Just do it. No way. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know, did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking, because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me that's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly. The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. 
The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Backpack? I look down. My school bag worn down and silly is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool, senseless and cruel. You are there, but I don't care. Is it me you're laughing at? What? I never. After all, you're not my pet. <laughs> I'm not going along with this nonsense anymore, got it? Got it. Hey, it wasn't on purpose this time. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special, mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be a doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. I don't know about that. Alright, alright. What did you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright. Not like at home. That's it. Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft. And the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner. We went to our rooms. Did the dad go get some milk? And what happened then? I don't remember. It doesn't even matter. Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please. Oh, fine. That day, dad picked me up from school earlier. He explained to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and we went to our separate rooms. Satisfied. Tell me about it again. Dad dragged me out of the school building while scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what the little brat had done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Please let's not discuss this further. No, you'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate Mom so much. What happened next? Suddenly I feel someone's eyes on my back, knowing that these moments should never ever be ignored. I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. I look at my bag again, light pouring into the room for the windows glint on the metal parts, and there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever. I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a feat of sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It's already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. 
It's barely glowing. It can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. So I don't need the important items to give a firefly, I think. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. Finish searching. Why is someone like glitchy? Let's just try finish searching early. You know, I made a save, so it's fine. I managed to get over my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? We'll go to the balcony, for even some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but... I feel like someone is watching me. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. Just for a couple of minutes, okay? Oh man, that's a good CG. Get that artsy thing going on. My apartment building looks like a bombless cooking pot. But instead of soot, it has hundreds of concrete and metal boxes on its walls. There are lights on in the windows. There are muffled voices coming from the inside. The howling wind spirals up and splits into hundreds of independent streams. Seems like it wants to be heard by every person living here. It must feel so lonely, living in endless silence. Your apartment building is pretty weird, isn't it? I could see the horizon from my window before, and the building grew for miles in both directions. I guess at some point it circled around and closed on itself. Nothing unusual about that. How do you feel? I definitely feel. Sometimes that's more than enough. Still, you're anxious, aren't you? Of course, moreover, I'm completely terrified. Was it that obvious? You're looking in every direction, but not up. Ah, uh, this. I've already told you, haven't I? About what? Ah, uh, you know, small stuff. Can small stuff make you terrified? It's hard to explain. I climb up the middle railing and let my legs hang down. I sneak short glances at the abyss from time to time. It replies with angry cold breath. That's how we interact. Like old friends. Sometimes I feel like the whole world pretends to be crazy. As if it's trying to make me believe in something that doesn't exist. That's weird, isn't it? Yes, but... At the same time, it makes you feel a little bit happy. Everything around me was created for my sake. To deceive, trick, and confuse me. If that's true, I guess I'm not so crazy myself after all. You believing in this is the definition of craziness. You're probably right. I never gust of wind blast against the pot's walls, smashing the glass to dust and blowing away the concrete crust. I, on the other hand, feel a gentle breeze that only ruffles my hair. I still haven't come up with a code word. You're the one to remember your promise. You don't need a code word anymore. I don't like when this happens. I want to remember certain things only when I want to. Nonetheless, you've made that promise. And I'll keep it. But you need to keep in mind that from this moment on, every word will bring me pain. I bend down and imagine falling into the abyss. I have exactly two minutes before I meet my end. Oh, here's the story. I had a friend online, my best friend. 
even though the combination of letters he used instead of his name wasn't that cool. Well, the combination of pixels he had instead of his photo was also boring and unattractive. This is so strange and wrong. Breaking the rules of being online. Why was he doing that? Maybe his code was a few lines short. I don't quite get what you mean. I could tell you about those rules. You can't find them anywhere. But I'm smart, so I figured them out myself. Although... I'm not sure I should divulge them. Why? When I try to say what I think out loud, I tend to make mistakes. If I make just a single one, everything that comes after can contradicts my thoughts. And I end up with opposite with the opposite position. And I don't want that. According to that logic, it'd be better for you to keep your mouth shut forever. Yeah, that's my dream. Keep my mouth shut. Never get up from bed. Never see or hear anything. Just dream on and on. Oh, why is everything so terrible? Don't get distracted. So what was that about your friend? My friend? Oh, yes. He... he was crazy enough to... Come on, gather your thoughts. He somehow made me believe that he was real. He kept describing someone else's life to me in detail as if it was him. And he expected me to do the same. And then I told him everything about myself, without hiding a single thing. I grip my teeth. The wind whips my face without mercy. It slices my skin into uneven stripes, as if it's a piece of thin cloth. He knew more about me than anybody else in the world. You know what he did? Yes. <laughs> Sending an army of bots to harass me was probably fun. And what's most important, it was a win-win situation. They spawn here and there, simple bits of code, they're effortless to run. No wonder the algorithm assigns that pattern more often than the others from the list. Text and video generators get to work at the same time. My name surfaces in the web more and more. It's unbearable. Unbearable. From around every corner, every balcony, ceiling, attic, wall, I always feel many pairs of watchful eyes directed at me. And now they watch me from the screens, too. But I'll put an end to it. I've decided a long time ago. Though, maybe I've only decided that only. My body finally crashes into the ground, smashing into millions of tiny pieces, like porcelain. It's my second death for today already. It's got achievement too, second death. I'm cold. Let's go back inside. I return to my room. Thankfully it hasn't changed one bit during the minutes I was outside. Without a second thought, I go toward my laptop and yank the power cable from the outlet. That's it. That's it. That's it. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside of a bag of milk, and yet... And yet... Towel drop, by the way. You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then. No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've flirted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I want to forget forever. This is a multi-ending game, I believe, by the way. So I'm not sure what ending we're getting. I don't blame you. But was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I'm, um... I nervously scratch my wrist and bite my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me. 
Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. Don't worry. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. No, you! Sleep tight, milk bag instead of a bag of milk, Chan. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know. Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they liked this place. They always fall in my wake, peeping at me. And I'm kind of scared of them, I can't even argue with them. But today, today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me. Of course, they're still listening, you know. Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. I want me to... Tell you a bedtime story. Shh. And I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you except the audience here. All 200,000 of them. So what do you say? I'd be happy to. But I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. By the way, if you're the 200,000 of... Viewer, you got a comment. Just talk some talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that you will end up just wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Got an achievement? You won't get it. Oh, this is like the first game. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You. Are. Late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back. Also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young. He'd already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me that has a soul that's not empty. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Triska says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. 
I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He suddenly burst out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. What is going on? Our trip to the store went fine. If not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's door, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate the working hours in this way? They probably have a special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell off the brat, but a scary-looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a card sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Wow. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Oh, oh, oh yeah. After no run of going across a long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Triska lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with her back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again! Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning, he's crying. Can you act normal? You, you don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. I don't ever people still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who, me? Triska pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign on the door. There you are. We trisk at the cash register. Before that, I needed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of the long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. 
dang, bro. But you heard me. You know what? If it had raged after all banknote to the cashier of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spent the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know. He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with the determination. I stare at his back confused. Hey, what are you doing? Did you just... Did you just do the... the shaft head tilt? It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. So we got one ending. I saw quite a few ways we probably could have gotten other endings, and we, we could have branched the dialogue. I'm not gonna go into the plot yet. There's a lot to absorb here, and we really need like all the other endings. Um, some more information to kind of put things together. Although I'm gonna say primarily the game is an experience format. It's kind of like... Yeah, it's confusing, but I also kind of understand it. It's definitely a psychological game. And not psychological in that the dad killed his kids and now he's haunting the house. Which is, you know, usually when they say like psychological horror, that's what they mean. But it's more of there. there's some like actual psychology going on here. So we're gonna be looking for the other endings now. Um, there's probably like a lot of like little one-off dialogues and things if we choose different choices, but I suspect that this section right here is the kind of um, the clinch pin for how all these endings are made. So I won't be going back for those choices. There's probably like too many of them to keep track. I look at the amount of pills. It makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. This one. Yes, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Things could be much worse. First one? Of course not. It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I heave a deep sigh. Come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them, a firefly. Hooray. After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Check these papers out. The usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's only kind of information I can't take in without trouble. Or I can take in without trouble, I think. Doses and side effects. Yeah. I thought you'd know them by heart. 
Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My screen makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. So we already know that the laptop and the book and this all have fireflies. So since we already showed those, I'll just skip those dialogues. Finish searching. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess. This is a weird ending so far. So I think all endings branch off of uh, when um, when she asks you to tell her a bedtime story. So this is the ending we've gotten so far. I think this one we got all the fireflies. We didn't see one cutscene earlier on one of the animated ones. And we didn't go into the balcony. Uh, another terrible morning. Boo. Why's my face always so stupid? What are the others at school will think? Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you, after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, Mom. Mmm? Ugh, never terrible morning. Yeah. It's always bad when you're... Half your face is falling off. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you, after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, Mom. Deja vu? Well, very weird deja vu. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up. Yes, Bomb. I guess we're a bit of a holy person. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you, after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, Mom. I wonder how many times this is gonna go on. <laughs> That's a good look. That's a good look. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? What more the ever skirt school will think? Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, Mom. Maybe it's over finally? Nope, there's two of us now. Ugh, never a terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at the school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just want to be brand a loser on my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, Mom. Let's go on for maybe a couple more times. <laughs> Oh no. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo. Why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the efforts at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. 
I just want to be brand a loser on my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up. Yes, mom. I see. I think we get it. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just want to be brand a loser my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, mom. Now there's just nothing. Now it's just a void. <sighs> Never terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the efforts at the school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up. There's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up! Yes, mom. Seriously, how many more? This one's just blank face. It's kind of similar, but we still have a little bit of a head left. Good morning. I feel wonderful today. Can't wait for my first day at school. Hey, hurry up! Yes, mom. Oh, notice that that last one, the dialogue was different. And we had no face. At least I think it was. It's all kind of blurring. Milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. I get close to the waste bin, look inside of curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. And manly soul. Boring. There's nothing here in. Indeed. No self respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. I tilt my head backward and almost fall over. The closet's hanging to the ceiling at least 300 feet off the floor. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally, I'm definitely not worried. Not even a little bit, not even a smidgen a little, just a bit. Thank me for a thousand of a percent, that much, that's how much I don't care. Hey, let me done tell you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatrical yawn and held out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise him above my head. Then I T-pose. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. When was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever. I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine, you have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction. Then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They... pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get fruit to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? No. Let's continue searching then.
Right. Insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard. And death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. But we kind of don't have a choice here, you know. Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? I think sleeping bag is like one of the last ones we haven't checked. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items. Close their eyes and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time. But right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah. My thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary. They always cause insomnia. Just like tonight. Okay. Turn my eyes towards an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> Alright, so we didn't find all fireflies. So now we're just going to do finish searching. So this ending, I did not get all the fireflies. I think this one might be tied to... I did do the balcony scene. I wake up lying on a cold floor in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls, and a single door. I hear muffled sounds coming from the other side of it. Scary sounds. I hug my knees. I wrap myself in my sweater like it's a blanket. It's no use. I'm chilled to the bone. The room is pretty spacious, but I still can't shake the feeling that I'm trapped inside a suffocating gasket, and the faint blue glow that sneaks in through the keyhole only adds to that feeling. Do I want to know what's outside? As if on cue, an inhuman roar comes from the other side of the door. It becomes louder and louder, more and more distinct with every passing second. Somebody or something is getting closer. I curl into a ball, try to take up as little space as possible. Maybe I can become invisible or become smaller in some miraculous way. In the meantime, the howl becomes unbearably loud, but only for a moment. Then it sheepishly backs off until I can't hear it anymore. I finally decide to stand up. After I do that, I hear another strange sound. It's coming from right above me now. The ceiling moves upwards, squeaking. Small debris is falling on my head. I squint a little, then raise my hand, trying to touch the ceiling. But something starts to rise quicker, 
it instantly disappears into the darkness. I'm not in a casket anymore. Well, it wasn't exactly a casket now. It was a well in the form of a casket. The room becomes darker and colder. I'll have to do something at some point. Hours pass. I frantically run from one wall to another. Delirious. The walls run away from me. Making the already spacious room even bigger. In the end, I stand amidst endless darkness, and only the door is watching me with its eye. I kept purposely avoiding it. I could sometimes hear horrifying rustles and howls on the outside. However, now I don't even have a choice anymore. I slowly come up to the door and reach out toward it. As expected, the door also moves away from me. I continue moving forward with my hands stretched out. I don't want to lose the only source of light in this pitch black darkness. At some point I get tired of sneaking up on the door. I get some wild animal. So I lunge at it, trying to grab the handle. However, at the last moment, the door whizzes away and I fall into the cold floor, unable to keep my balance. It hurts. Stupid door. Stupid nasty cursed door. I hate you, I hate you. I scream at the top of my lungs. I finally let out all the despair that I have fallen up. I slowly realize how horrible a situation I end up in is. No, 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 no. I don't stop screaming for a moment, because I'm scared to end up in a complete silence. If the reality around me disappears, my twisted imagination will take over, and the realest thing I have right now is my voice. Hey, I can hear you. A voice, coming from the other side of the door. I'm here. Come closer. I scream thrice as hard as before. I scream until my throat hurts, until my ears start buzzing. My biggest wish right now is to keep in touch with that person, whoever they are. Hey, where are you? I rush toward the door, stumbling on the way. I keep running for a minute, for ten minutes. The door is even an inch closer. At the same time, the distance between us hasn't grown either, which means I match it in speed. I just need to make one final push. I gather the last bit of strength I have, and push my legs off the ground. The jump feels like an eternity. I stretch out my hand, almost touching the scratchy wood. I dive face first into the ground with ridiculous speed, and I slide at least 30 more feet like that thanks to inertia, leaving behind a bloody trail. My hand is still outstretched, trying to grab empty space. Tears stream down my face, making the numerous scratches burn. I try to wipe them, but I scream and yank my hand away the moment I touch my face. My lips and nose are now a mushy mess. Somebody! Help! The other side of the door is completely silent. The silence reigns for an excruciatingly long time. However, at some point, that silent torture ends. Hey! I can see you! I try to reply, but the stuffed whimpers come out of my throat instead of words. Are you hurt? Yes, yes. Hurt on the inside. I stand up from my knees despite continuing to cry. I take a couple of deep breaths to start running again. I keep running for hours. I feel like the door is closer to me like an inch or two now. I almost let myself stop for the rest of that thought. I can't rest. I'll catch up to it sooner or later. The voice from up the other side of the door keeps asking me how I feel. I let out heavy, ragged breaths in reply. I'll fall from exhaustation if I utter even a single word. Still, I'm thankful to them. I don't want them to become silent. After another hour passes, I barely scratch the handle with my nails. I'm almost there. I'm so scared. Why aren't you doing anything? I, uh... Why are they doing this to me? Don't understand how painful this is for me. Almost there. You're scaring me, go away. Rage fills my brain. I ignore the pain in my bones and channel all my strength into one final jump. No! Go away! 
I firmly grasped the handle and opened the door. Blinding lights hit my eyes. I lose the ground beneath my feet and start falling. I'm like face down in grass. I smell water, earth, and the dampness of the night, and grass, of course. The wind tickles the back of my head. It howls and jumps around restlessly. Lying down like this is unpleasant and rude, when nature is so alive around me with sounds, and I'm pretty sure colors, too. I stand up, full of anticipation. I see an endless field, a clear sky without a single star, and a pale moon somewhere very, very far away. But not in a galaxy far away. I shake my head and try to focus my eyes on anything, but to no avail. I shake my head and try to focus my eyes on anything, but to no avail. My surroundings are just too vast. I feel dizzy. Bam! I'm lying in the thick wet grass again. But this time I'm looking at the darkness of a night sky, instead of just darkness. Is there any real difference, though? The wind howls. It's clearly upset. But what can I do about it? I hear an indiscernible echo coming from far away. A wolf or someone else. Does it even matter? I'm in the grass. Nobody can see me. Whoa! That's more... <laughs> that's more of a cartoon cliche of ghost. The echo draws closer and closer. At some point I realize that's not a wolf. I jump up and start turning my head in a panic. Where is that sound coming from? I haven't said that out loud. I got an instant reply. Ooh. Hey, I can hear you. My voice runs across the field, mixing with the rustle of the grass and the howls of the wind. It feels like it's about to get absorbed by them, but... Ooh. Hey, where are you? Ooh. I can't understand where I should run to and if I should run at all. Something clearly wants me to find and help them. Maybe they're hurt. The grass tickles my heels while I drag my feet in the direction where I think the sound is coming from. It's just... There's not a single tree or stone around. Only an endlessly wide field. I hear a sounding painful scream. I shut my eyes and cover my ears. I suddenly feel scared. The screams turn into a cry. I carefully raise my head, still scared to death. Some are very far away among the thick grass. I spot a silhouette. Just a small black spot, but... Hey, I can see you! The silhouette doesn't move, but the sound is definitely coming from its direction. No, it's not a scream. More like a whisper or a wheeze. Ooh! No, you hurt. No reaction again. Just muffled sounds. Maybe it's the wind going mad, and the black spot is just a stone or a tree. I walk away disappointed. 100 steps, 200 steps. Then I turn around. Surprisingly, the spot hasn't become smaller. I start jogging. The grass is no longer tickling me. It's whipping my ankles, leaving guts. Feelings of panic and unexplainable dread grow inside me. A stone, a tree, why else is this field endless? I don't turn around anymore. I know that it's chasing me. The sounds reaching my ears become even stranger, louder and more distinct. The wind is bullying me too, huh? Isn't that right? That's the case, right? Finally I stop. I ran out of breath. I'm at the brink of dying, at least I think so. Ooh. <laughs> the horrifying voice is coming from right from behind me. I turn around instinctively and, for some reason, try to shield my face, but end up losing balance and falling to the ground. The grass replies with a nasty cackling rustle. Oh, I've had enough. I spring up. The silhouette is still there, at the same distance as before. It's standing there, without moving an inch. I'm scared here, you know. 
Why won't you do anything? The silhouette trembles and it starts slowly gliding towards me, followed by new sounds, wheezes and moans. Fear shackles me. I can only stand and watch the approaching black spot. My lips are parched. I speak in a voice I don't recognize. You're scaring me. Go away! After that, the spawn expands rapidly. In the blink of an eye, most of the sky in the field is consumed by the sticky cold darkness. Paralysis finally lets my body go, and I immediately sprint away. Oh! I run so fast that the grass turns into a dark green mush under my feet. I slip up, fall, and run again. That's a lot of O's. No! Go away! An unknown force turns my head into a crunching sound. That darkness consumes everything. I wake up on the cold floor, in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls. So this ending, I pretty much, pretty much like didn't do anything. Like I, I just kind of like never saw any events. Really like, clicked all fireflies. I wake up and immediately almost lose consciousness from horror. A thin metal stairway snakes around a giant column, disappearing into the darkness. I press myself into the cold wall and pray that I freeze into it. All these endings seem to be well, they're all dreams, but they are very dream-like the way they're described. This feeling. I know I've spent a couple of hours or days here, but I don't know how high the column is. I don't know whether I'm going up or down. A billion pounds of concrete and a million miles of emptiness. It's impossible to stay sane when you're near cosmic numbers like that. Looking at them, touching them, you can think of them makes you feel unimaginable horror. It was just a matter of time before the short term here will end. My mind will melt and my body will turn to dust. The wall's coarse surface scratches my face. The steps under my feet hum from the wind, eager to escape the concrete's clutches and dive into the abyss along with me. But I'll stay here. I'll stay here without going anywhere. I won't even open my mouth. My every word will be swelled up by the abyss. I won't take a single step. Why would I? To find out where the stairway abruptly ends. It's all meaningless. Useless. Many units of time pass, but I'm still unmoving. My whole body is trembling, but then I realize it's the whole space around me that is trembling. It can't wait to destroy me. Maybe I should gather my will and at least turn my head. That thought doesn't stay in my head for long. It's torn out with inhuman force, unaware of what's about to happen. I slowly turn my whole body with a squeak. Squeak. No, this is not what I wanted. I don't! Amongst the silence sings a lonely colossus, unmoving, until the music stops. The bridge across the dark abyss cannot be seen. Impressive, thick, sticky air drives itself into my ears, silencing my thoughts with haphazard strings of words while I watch the scene before me unfold. 
Hundreds of giant concrete structures, just like mine, spread in tidy rows endlessly in all directions. Stairways wrap around them in like vines. There, at the end of this world, there's a person smiling. This world still exists, but all that makes it both exist and not. I try to wreck a mind block, but to no avail. My brain is already at the mercy of the super creature. A moment passes and I realize that my body doesn't belong to me either anymore. My legs start moving on their own. The only thing I can do is choose a direction, hump down or... Left, right? Into <laughs> the abyss, going to see how stairs work. The crowd notices blood in Wazek's hands. He runs away. Mandel appears. He has nothing human about him, apart from his excessive grace and elegance. He walks out to the center of the stage. First act begins. Foreign thoughts become even more incoherent. There's less and less space for my own. Do you feel the connection to your body clearly? Or does it still cause confusion and fear? If you've been living through that fear a lot recently, how did it manifest exactly? Answer honestly, don't hide anything. Man, I've seen dreams like this. I descend to descend, descend. Or I decide to descend. You can have a sneaking suspicion that something is wrong because your path has changed. Maybe you start talking in the wrong way or made some sort of mistake. If so, start getting used to your new life. Try creating imagery that would instill the feeling that everything is as it should be. And with time, it will create a new world inside you. I don't doubt that you're going through some hard times. But you have to make sacrifices. Grow up. Well, then you'll be able to obtain the meaning of life. Do you get it? Try that if you find it important. Every passing day is a precious gift. If you share a piece of that gift with the world even once, it will seem like a speck of dust. Do you get it? No, I'm sorry, I won't get that, Ben. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Yes, you even get it. When you notice how people look at themselves in the mirror, when you look at your own reflection and realize it exists in reality, do you understand how exactly it exists? That was an abrupt ending of that dream. But no, I mean, it's supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be dreamlike. Like, very dreamlike dreams. Not the kind of like, everything's cool and funky kind of dreams. Which is more like what dreams are, because dreams usually are just a series of uh, thoughts trying to form a coherent story, per se. Unless you're my dreams. My dreams are just isekai worlds. There's like a little thing down here. What's this? I don't know, you tell me. So in this ending, I grabbed the thing in the bottom right. Didn't really seem to do anything else of any note. Hello, thank you for choosing our pizzeria. You know, this place is so empty. I don't feel particularly good or bad because of it. I'm all alone. But at the same time, it feels like I'm not. There's a lot of thoughts in my head. They always keep me entertained. I can create a whole world with them. I'm sure I'll be able to fill the void around me if I try hard enough. Although... No matter how much I think, my surroundings don't change. Yes, things happen in my head. But they never left the premises. It's not like I tried to suppress them. Maybe they're afraid to come out. What kind of pizza would you like to order? Anyway, there's so much space in my head that I could be put to good use. So every thought would make senseless and merciless a circle in my head, destined to go back to where it started. But there should be an end somewhere. You can't wander around forever. What do you think? I know it sounds scary, but it's not scarier than constantly existing among the void. This place is safe, and nothing bad will happen here. Nothing good will happen either, though. Please note that we have a special offer right now. Three pizzas for the price of two. Yeah, there's probably nothing good in having the same thoughts over and over. 
What's the point of having them anyway? I could have escaped from here, but I feel like Fonts aren't helping me at all. They should be ashamed, probably. It's nobody's fault that I came and see a door here. I would have had it easier if one. I tried to find it. It turned out to be a waste of time. No matter where I look, it's not looking good. But not intended. And that strips me of the last bit of hope for salvation. We also have a discount program for new customers. You can learn more about it on your account page. Don't you think that me being here is also a waste of time? What's the point in that? I can just keep on thinking, and even then my thoughts are as meaningless and empty as everything else. Doesn't mean that I'm not filling the void, but I am a part of it. Then why should I feel anything? Why should I know that I exist? Although I'm not even sure about that. This place is always neither warm nor cold. It's neutral. But at the same time, if I think about warmth, I feel warm. Maybe this world corresponds to my thoughts. I wouldn't want to admit that I'm completely empty. I'm not the reason everything had disappeared, right? Can I just adapt and get used to having nothing around me since I can't do anything about it? Are you ready to make your order? Yes, that's right. I shouldn't care. It's empty here and it makes me feel neither good nor bad. I'm all alone, but at the same time it feels like I'm not. There are a lot of thoughts in my head. They always keep me entertained. I can create a whole world with them. This place is safe, and nothing bad will happen here. Nothing good will happen either though. Me being here is a waste of time. I don't fill the void. I'm a part of it. This strips me of the last bit of hope for salvation. I shouldn't care. It's empty here, and it makes me feel neither good nor bad. It's nobody's fault that I came and see a door here. What's the point in having one? I feel like nobody's helping me. They should feel ashamed. I wouldn't want to admit it, but I'm all alone here. And I can't do anything about it. Please know that we have a special offer right now. Four pizzas are the price of two. I don't care that this place is empty, you hear? I feel never good nor bad. I'm all alone. My head is full of thoughts. They eclipse the world around me. This space is pretty cramped, but at least it's safe. Even though I'll never feel good here. Does that mean existing is a waste of time? I need to decide. And my thoughts will help me. They'll lead me to the exit. And I'll be able to feel proud of myself. I'll be able to save myself. And at the same time... I don't really care anymore. This place is empty. It makes me feel neither good nor bad. I'm alone. My head is full of thoughts. A whole world, one might say. I try hard enough, he'll be able to fill all the void around me. Still. No matter how much I keep thinking, my surroundings don't change. Yeah, something happened outside of my head, but... What was it? There's not enough space for my thoughts. It's already filled with something else. It's a weird voice on the left side of my headset. Anyone else hear this? It sounds like reverse speaking. If there's nothing around me, I'm still here. And my head is full of thoughts. If I try hard enough. 
So the world isn't empty after all. I can't see anything. Such in timeout, please reload the page. It kind of comes back to what I was talking about earlier, with the dreamlike state of just mixed data. So like the session timeout thing just comes out of nowhere, see? So that's it for milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. So the story is very interpretive. A lot of it's just psychological kind of um, experience analysis. I don't necessarily see this as a symbolic game. There is symbolism in like the dreams and some of the things that are being said and some of like the lines between the, uh, it's as if you like read between the lines, but it's more like you're kind of living the life of some of a very specific mental state that processes information in a certain way that has certain thoughts, that has experienced certain things. And some of the people who were watching this video where I've played this game might, um, might find it either accurate or not. If you have like some personal opinions on that, depending where how you felt, maybe you relate to the game or things, you know, leave a comment about that. But it is interesting sequel. Um, it is obviously much bigger game than the, the first one, especially just in production values alone. It is surprisingly heavier than the first one, and overall, it's a bit of an experience. It's it's a very unique, hard to describe game, and I can't really comment on it like objectively or anything like that, or even subjectively. All I can kind of say is I like this series. I can't fully say why. It just has a certain vibe that I agree with. But it's certainly very uh, a unique thing, a very unique taste. So your, your enjoyment's definitely gonna come down to whether you enjoy the writing or if you relate to parts of the writing. Because once again, there's nothing quite out there like it. Anyway, so thank you for watching me play Milk Outside of a Bag of Milk Outside of a Bag of Milk. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.